Welcome to Managing Asia. Many believe e-commerce in Southeast Asia is about to skyrocket, something online fashion retailer Zalora is betting heavily on. Today, we take a look inside the fast-moving competitive business with Managing Director Michele Ferrario. Michele Ferrario thinks the world of virtual stores. In fact, he helped to build this e-shop into Southeast Asia's fastest-growing online fashion retailer. With sales topping $44 million in the first half of 2014, just three years after its opening. What we've been doing here is uh, definitely super exciting in building uh, something new, something fresh, something that really uh, changed the way people connect to something that is in their daily lives. At 34 years old and managing over 2,000 staff, Ferrario is putting all his business knowledge to work. The MBA graduate from Columbia University had worked for McKinsey and & Company and a Milan-based private equity firm before joining Germany's famous startup incubator, Rocket Internet. When uh, the chance to uh, do something uh, with the internet came along, I thought that this was really you know, the right time to do a big change in career and think about something completely different that was really going to last for long and change the way people do things. He was part of the team at Rocket Internet that set up Zalora in 2012. His task now is to make it work from his base in Singapore. Singapore is definitely well served in terms of uh, online, offline, offline retail. But when you think about you know, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, you, 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 know, you can uh, quickly picture how tier two, tier three and tier four cities, so the smaller towns uh, in, those, in those countries, uh, do, people living there do not have the same access to, to fashion that, uh, that people living in capitals of the world. Together with our investor, we thought that there is a huge opportunity to really change the way, uh, the way people access fashion. But competition is rife in the crowded arena of online shopping. Battling heavyweights like Amazon and ASOS on one side and Alibaba and Rakuten on the other. Building an e-commerce site in Southeast Asia is not easy. How do you deal with the lack of infrastructure and delivery networks in this part of the world? We dealt with that since day one. So Zalora was a company that was never a garage startup. We always thought that this was going to be a very big company and we therefore invested a lot in building an infrastructure mm. since day one. Like what? what? What does it mean? It means that we built, uh, so we open warehouses in every country and we have a warehouse in every country and that makes it possible for us to give customers an amazing customer, an amazing experience in terms of speed of delivery. We deliver, uh, we actually recently launched a same day delivery in all capital cities of Southeast Asia and that's because we have local warehouses we can do that. Uh, on, on the second piece, we, uh, we partner with uh, local delivery partners in every country and uh, over, over the last uh, three years we built with them strong partnership, we learned with them, we taught them something, they taught us something and working together we managed to really build uh, the capabilities to uh, give our customers the experience that we, they would receive if they were living in New York or London. So how long did it take for you to build up the delivery services, the warehousing structures? How long did it take you? So the reality is that uh, things at Zalora has moved very fast. After three months from foundation, we were open in you know, six markets with warehouses in every market, more than a thousand people everywhere. Uh, so the answer to your question is we were fairly fast in building mm -hmm. the basic infrastructure and then we improved. So you didn't lose any time? We definitely didn't lose any time. Mm -hmm. We didn't get bored on, on the job any day uh, during the last three years. We so were, it's all about scale and speed? It's all about scale, it's all about speed, it's a lot about quality and about caring about the customers. So uh, the speed is important uh, in many factors. One is how fast we scaled up the company, on the other side is how fast we were able to build uh, what is needed to provide to the customers perfect customer experience. And the fact that we have a team of people whose only job mm. is to make sure our customers are happy. We call all of our customers, uh, the place and we, we send the survey to all customers that are that placed an order and we call all customers that have actually given us a, uh, a negative feedback to understand exactly what went wrong and we act upon it. So we have mm -hmm. a team focusing on them specifically. So when you build up a company that fast, obviously you need good people and like all startups, you face high staff turnover. How long did it take for you to build up that core team who were used to the sort of grueling work you, give, you gave them, who were used to the long hours that you put in? So. In the, during the first year, we really built a team, and that, that core team has been has been now uh, with the company since since then. So it's uh, it's really we don't see a lot of 
uh, a lot of rotation uh, other than the normal things that you will see in every company. Uh, we have been adding talent over time, uh, both internationally as well as locally. And, uh, uh, and I, feel, I feel that the people that are now uh, at Zalora are really here because they believe in what we're doing. And, we, uh, and that changes a bit the way you, you go to work every day. If you believe you're doing something that is bigger than just doing you know, your nine to five, nine to six, nine mm. to seven job, but it's rather something that is a bit more meaningful to you. Uh, I think it changes the way you interact with the company, you interact with your colleagues, and you look at you know, your everyday, uh, everyday job. So when you hire people for your team, are they all below 30 years old? So they're not all below 30 <laughs> years old. We actually, we hired, we hired a few people that brought to the table a lot of experience, <laughs> but the reality is that our average age is below 30 years old. So yes, we do have a lot of young people and a lot of those people have huge responsibilities. So one mm -hmm. of the good things about uh, you know, coming to Zalora uh, for, for young talent is that they get the potential to shine mm -hmm. that they would probably not get in any other company, I would say. Today you sell about 400 brands, you have about 30,000 product lines on your website with hundreds being added on every week. How exactly do you do that when you have so many different markets in Asia, Southeast Asia, with so many different cultures, with so many fashion tastes? How do you do that? We do uh, customize uh, certain pieces of what we do and uh, while on the other side mm -hmm. we have certain part of our assortment that is the same everywhere. So uh, for instance, in Malaysia and Indonesia we sell Muslim wear to our, uh, uh, to our Muslim customers. In other countries, we don't. At the same time, mango dress are sold everywhere. Mm. Top, Sounds right? like a huge sourcing and logistical exercise. It is, in fact. And uh, as you can imagine, our products are sourced from all over the world. You know, we, uh, we have brands from Europe, we have brands from the US, we have uh, uh, products that are manufactured, of course, in Southeast Asia, and uh, we bring it all together uh, in our, uh, through our supply chain and then uh, deliver Just how big is your possible. sourcing team? We have a sourcing team in every country. Uh, we have a, local, a regional sourcing team in Singapore that takes care of talking with uh, the global brands. Uh, and, we, and then we have local sourcing team that takes care of talking with the local brands. We, we want to build a platform that is uh, available for Southeast Asian designers and brands to really uh, prosper and find customers there. Mm. You're operating in Southeast Asia, one of the biggest e-commerce markets in the world. What's your outlook for online retail spend here in the region? I think in Southeast Asia, online retail is still very, very tiny compared to the potential of it. Uh, Euromonitor calls $100 billion the uh, market size for fashion in 2018 in, in the markets we cover. I'll let you do your own, uh, your own math in terms of how much it will, will be online. In, uh, uh, according also to Euromonitor, in uh, uh, mm. more developed markets, is now close to 20%. Uh, here in this region is, is a tiny fraction of that. So, uh, and I believe it's gonna be more than in, in the development. How much of the online retail spend in Southeast Asia do you want to capture? Uh, it's, uh, Give me a percentage. You know, it's hopefully you know, closer to 50%.